Hello, everybody. I am Alpha Bird. Welcome to a new War Game cast. We're continuing coverage of the hardened tournament today and we're continuing in the lower bracket so that's uh, players that have been uh, beaten or lost a game once before they get a second chance to uh, continue through in the tournament and that's what we're looking at today we have uh, Sater versus Sandelman I think I've covered both of these players on the channel before so hopefully not new to you and Hopefully, will be quite a good game between these two players. Let's just have a look at Sater's deck on the left-hand side. He is playing a... Let me just recheck what he's playing. He is playing a Blue 4 Mechanized deck. So, a uh, right mix of units available to Sater. Let's have a look at what he's chosen. The Rifleman and rifleman 90s from the us we got commandos from the anzacs we got sochong Su's from the south koreans uh n67 hands in the uh hachi kiyoshiki from japan with chiu mats and mistrals from france so yeah right mix of units in there we do have some uk units with the gazelle ah ones in the recon tab bit disappointed that's the only uh, unit from the uk <laughs> in there we also only have the um tesfa b is that how you say it in uh, israel i'm looking at a really small screen here so some of the wording is not fantastic uh, we got an 810a thunderbolt from the us famous <laughs> uh be good to see where that thing comes out uh, that can either, from my experience, do amazing or flop. <laughs> so we'll see which one it is today. We got the F-16s, um, the Block 15, and the Fighting Falcons, as well as the F-5A Puff, which I think is the Seed plane, if I remember correctly. I'm not 100% on that, though. Uh, M1 Re uh, Abrams in the tank tab with the k1s from south korea i love the k1 such a great tank really is a great tank let's move over to the right hand side we have sandalman he is playing the lanyard deck so there are going to be some german and danish units facing each other we got leopard 2a5s which the k1s can't really stand up to the 2a4s as well i think might be too much for the k1s so that thunderbolt might need to come out to destroy some of those heavier leopard twos uh, what else do we have on the field in action in terms of the infantry perhaps not as much of a selection there we got some milan twos some flieger faust as the uh, anti-air infantry then we got panzer grenadiers and the martyr twos and then some live garden and dragoneers so the infantry matchup i think should go over to sater um with his units the panzergrens will be able to stand up to most of what sater puts in his way especially if they're used along with the martyr twos accompanying them in the air we've got some f-16s yeah some similar f-16s we've got a piece rhine which I, is the atgm plane if i remember correctly and the f4fs are going to back up uh air superiority so the f-16a mlu i think is the dedicated air superiority and i'm not sure about the f-16a block five whether that might be cluster but i'm mm, i can't quite remember we'll see when we get into the game what kind of aircraft that thing is let's get the game underway so a quick recap on the left hand side in blue we have satan and he was playing a blue four mechanized deck and then on the right hand side in red we have uh, sandalman or enter sandalman who's playing the lanyard deck early tiger 2 coming in here and thank you to proxy a new channel member as well early tiger 2 coming in here gonna snipe the gazelle and quickly take that thing down that perhaps might make sater think again about this push down the road oh and there's a big force 
facing him right now. We've got an AMX 10RC up against a hell of a lot of troops in his way. The M11 383s need to stop in their tracks and get off that road. Man, they just survived. I don't know how, but the AMX goes down. And I feel like Enter Sandman, <laughs> Enter Sandman, Enter Sandman could just push straight through here. There is the Nana Sanshiki opposite that might be able to snipe something. We have some Leopard 2s in here, although not the heaviest variant. And the infantry is going to fight it out in this heavy forest. M4-1A1s coming around to flank and provide support in fire. K1s rushing in with M11-3A3s with further infantry in them. I think that's the uh, riflemen. I might be wrong about that. Chumat's being smoked off by the mortar half track further back sandalman has won that forest engagement uh, so chung su sorry and rifleman coming in in reserve but they're now in the open ground and they're trying to make it across that open ground into the forest but i'm not sure they're actually going to make it there the k1s push forwards we could see an engagement here between the k1s and the leopard twos k1s trying to take out some of the transports leopard twos pushing their way forwards here we go here's the engagements one of the leopard two just goes down the other two are trying to engage but the k1's back off here i think sato will be happy taking out just one of those leopard twos stabilization malfunction on the other k1s down goes another leopard two and these leopard twos definitely not standing up to the k1s in fight so far but so chung su have gone down and the riflemen are going to go down as well to the dragoneers and the live garden although they're slightly backing off here on a fighting retreat i think the leopard 2a ones pushed forward to take out the ka fv25 nanasan shiki is going to come across the river here with some amphibious warfare love to see it riflemen are almost stunned out now Big engagement down on this southern side. I've not even been able to look elsewhere at what's going on. But I think finally things are starting to calm down. The Leopard 2s back off. The riflemen have gone down. There's an AMX 10 on the hill. Oh! Yeah, it was a dangerous attempt. I think Sato was trying to go for a side shot into the Leopard 2. But the AMX did not succeed. And man, what an engagement that was early on in the start of this game. I feel like overall, I think Sandalman just won the engagement. But the K1s definitely took a chunk out of Sandalman's Leopards. But yeah, I think in terms of if we remember the amount of infantry that Sato had pushed into the position initially and then with reinforcements, I definitely think sandalman won out in the engagement overall let's have a brief look over the rest of the battlefield there's no sneaky uh flanks going on we've got an m270 lrm rocket launcher has been called m called him uh, the k1s looking to push up over the hill in the center ground at foxtrot we've got a lynx with some recon troops on the way. Up north, we got an AMX or a pair of AMX 10 RCs trying to push around the flank. And uh, although caught in the mud somewhat, I was checking the fuel because I didn't think those French AMX 10 RCs had a hell of a lot of fuel, but they certainly got enough left at the moment. Uh, the riflemen's pushed down, pushed forwards, but are forced back. By the live garden, TGB-13 gonna just suicide itself up there. Commandos 90 trying to swing around the north, perhaps could make their way into Delta eventually, but it's gonna be a, a long time coming. K1s haven't really pushed forwards from their position guarding Foxtrot. We got some AMX 13s with the Mistral to prevent any um, helos coming down and attacking Bravo. Continuing smoke pouring in to cut off those chew mats, but I think I'm not sure whether the man catty is on the way down there, but I, I think a support truck, uh, a resupply truck 
Cord come in for those tumor mats because although I suppose there is a fresh one here with 10 missiles on it. Looks like an M11 3G did get stunned up there. I think by the flat panzer Gepard. I think I heard a, a Gepard burst. The AMX 10RCs are split up. They're still dealing with the rough ground up there. Ah, I think that was why the fuel was um, combined when they were together in the group. That was why I was thinking they don't really have a thousand units of fuel. <laughs> okay, rocket artillery. Oh, okay, no, smoke barrage. Interesting. I've not seen that before in Wargame. And to push up the hill, the K1s are going to be the main defense here. Smoke barrage does cover the troops. K1s back off the hill as well. And here comes the rocket response. Can't really see much of the action. That's come from the M270 LRM that's pushing way up north. A lot of the units stunned down, but I don't really think there was too much damage done there. I think actually uh, at least 10 men gone from the Dragoneers, but nothing too excessive. And a real punch into the center of Foxtrot from Sandalman here. He does really need to take Foxtrot though, because his position in Bravo is untenable right now. Nothing down there, and his position in Golf is not exactly excessive another attack from the laws is that going to be smoke or rockets i'm guessing it's rockets yep Ooh. one of the key ones are stunned doesn't quite manage to take out the supply truck which would have been a decent hiccup from that rocket attack but yeah the key ones are able to back away again I think Sandalman needs some better leopards out to deal with those K1s. His standard leopard 2s just aren't doing the job for him right now. 16 AP versus 15 frontal armor versus the K1s of 16 AP versus 17 frontal armor. I guess not as excessive a advantage towards K1 that I was thinking about. But certainly the K1s have done the job so far and... The Leopards haven't really dented those K1s at all. Dragoneer's close range attack with the law though. Now come under a hell of a lot of fire, especially from the M67 hands as well. Yeah, and I don't even think that attack did any damage if it did actually hit. But how is Sater going to push back right now? Because there is a dominating position from Sandalman on the top of the hill at Foxtrot. Ooh, I missed. I apologize. I missed the AMXs going down up north. In fact, actually, I think one of them's pushed down here. Uh, but one of them has gone down as well. Perhaps somewhere in here, we have a helo that's gone down. So maybe that AMX-10, it has now got weapons off. They've managed to shoot down a helo. Another attack from the M270. I'm actually not quite sure why Sater has decided to push that one as far back as he has. So the K1s are pushing forwards, close range into the forest. But here comes the response. A lot of rocket artillery in here now. And Satis making a push. He's trying to get this hill back up. The K1s are putting down some heavy, heavy fire onto those Jaegers. The riflemen are pushing straight through. The Jaegers are going to go down. The Leopard does die. A couple of, I think at least one of those K1s has gone down as well. Hard to keep my eye on the action. There's a Leopard 2A... Sorry, a Leopard 2 up north. The automatic just retreats in time. That would have been a 
pretty big kill for Satair. And wow, in the turn of a coin, Foxtrot has just... Oh, the automatic goes down to the Puff. Puff the Magic Dragon <laughs> does take down that automatic. We were right. That was the seed plane from Satair. And that's a bitter loss for Sandalman. Just as he managed to retreat it in time, the automatic did go down there. The uh, Hachikyu Shiki starting to fire on that Live Garden and and uh, doing a hell of a lot of damage as well. The Lars fires off, but nothing in that forest. I think Sandalman's assuming there's infantry that have pushed up with those K1s into that forest. But no, that was not the case. I think some of the K1s, yeah, are going back down to be fixed up with the Mankati below. Uh, the transport has gone down. The uh, Shiki that was in there. Leopard 2 fighting a K1. I think one of the K1s has gone down. There were two up here. So it looks like Sandalman has the tank advantage right now. He's going to be able to ambush the K1. Does lose a Leopard there, but does successfully take out one of the K1s. The other two that did retreat, have pushed forward again. There's a Roland 3 in a risky position. Yeah, Sator decided to pull that one back. I think that was a good choice there. That was a risky position for that Roland 3. And Foxtrot looked so strong, and now there's absolutely nothing there whatsoever. <laughs> what a turnaround. What a turnaround, because up to that point, Sandalman was looking really, really strong, but a lot of forces got destroyed there in Foxtrot. His Bravo position, like I say, he's got nothing in there. He has pushed forward slightly up north in golf. So, I think this is anyone's game right now. Absolutely anyone's game. There is an automatic in the area, but the weapon turned off to avoid the seed strike from that puff. And Sandalman learns from his mistakes. The AMX... Did go down, I think likely to the Phoenix Toe 2 here being resupplied with those Toe 2 missiles. Yeah, really, I'm not sure whether he's... Perhaps someone might comment whether there's any reason other than the fact that he's really far back, so... Um, it might not get counter batteries so easily. Actually, my other thought is... It makes the dispersion bigger the further the further range you are. So I wonder whether that's the dispersion reasoning. Is that a standard thing from war game players? Because obviously that would give the LRMs a bigger dispersion, but you've only got 12 rockets at a time. Interesting decisions. The puff comes out again, but the automatic has those weapons turned off. Both sides now looking to re-establish their frontline units after that intense battle on the Hill of Foxtrot. And I've really enjoyed this game so far. Really intense action from the very start down here between Bravo and Foxtrot. And then on the center hill, we do have a Fuchs Milan coming in with some command infantry to pick up. I imagine to pick up the golf position. I mean, you could sneak them here into this tree line in Foxtrot as well, but... Yeah, looks like it is going to golf. The Fennec 20 mil coming around the northern side. Might spot those commandos. We've got a large to attack again on this forest. Sanderman not realising there is nothing in there. And the second one, is it going over the hill? No. Just into the tree lines, although the rifleman did recently move out of that position. We now have an F4F overhead. Providing some air superiority coverage. And that should stop the puffs coming in on the seed duty. The automatic moves forwards. And the Fennec Toe 2 trying to take care of some of these transports. Riflemen going to reveal themselves, engaging the Jaeger 90s. And it looks like Sanderman is going to re 
position himself on the center of Foxtrot. The two K1s push forward. We're going to have a Leopard versus K1 engagement. Leopard's losing out every single time right here. And the damage should be split, as far as I'm aware, on those K1s because they're grouped up. Or well, not necessarily the damage should be split, but the hits. I might be wrong about that. <laughs> I'm testing my war game knowledge there. We've got some engagements again on this southern forest. I imagine they've come across the river here. They could have come down the road as well, though. Probably more likely, actually, because the KA5Vs... No, they are amphibious, so it is possible they came across the river. A1s have retreated. Dragoneers, I think, took a shot and revealed themselves. The gazelles are getting involved, as well as the AMXs. And the other Leopard 2, I think, has gone down. Yeah. So there was one remaining Leopard that I think also went down. Those K1s have just been instrumental in the defense for Satyr so far. Ooh, there's a Roland in a tough position right now. That one doesn't manage to, uh, or, or does manage to escape. Although a second strike. And again, nothing dies. Those last strikes really not, not getting the kills. Uh, what size rockets are those? 110 millimeter rockets. So uh, I guess they aren't the heaviest. Sandalman does pick up golf. But um, at a very similar time, Sata picks up Bravo. So no real difference between the two players now. And Foxtrot, I think, is going to be the main concentration of forces from now on. The Tez for B coming in here actually has its rockets turned off. So only using those Vulcans. The Vulcan minigun. And the automatic just slaps it down. Now the puff comes in. But Sandalman quick on the seed micro. Turns it back on again. I think he was trying to possibly get that puff on the way out. Yeah, off again. <laughs> the tactics though. A very uh, important part. Oh, here comes the Thunderbolt. Puff overhead as well. Taking care of the automatic for now. That Thunderbolt can stay around as long as that automatic isn't in play. So we've had a push forwards up north from Sandalman. Another last strike coming in here. And he is pretty much... He's close to pushing Sater completely out of golf. That might open the avenue for Echo. But I think... Due to this kind of dead ground behind Foxtrot that Sandman just isn't able to get a handle on, I think that flank is just cut away for now. Oh, here come the F4Fs. Oh, down goes the puff. That should allow the automatic to uh, come back into play. I think one of those F4s went down to the Roland 3. The K1s have been able to push forward, and down goes the automatic. Oh, yeah, the automatic has gone down. So, nice work from Sata, pushing forward the K1 and picking up the automatic kill. Leopard 2A1's in here now from Sandalman, and I'm kind of surprised he hasn't brought out heavy tanks already in this game. Because the K1s have just been wrecking his Leopards so far. Ah, it's the M163. I was just hearing the uh, machine gun fire from that Vulcan there. And I was wondering, like, where where is that fire? Okay, so half the game time has now elapsed. 20 minutes gone, 20 minutes left. It is anyone's game as far as I see it right now. Do have some mortars in here, which yeah, they they have been here from the start. Provided smoke onto the two mats early on. The um, 
Sator is moving these two mats further forwards. I think he's going to try and get them on the edge of these forests here. Perhaps snipe anything coming across the bridge. He's got riflemen very far forwards. Both players are starting to look at exploiting the flanks. We've got a thunderbolt coming around the southern side. No real anti-air infantry, sorry, uh, anti-air units on the ground right now. Leopards coming in here might be able to take out the Leopard 2A1s. Got a couple of strikes. Yep, down goes one of them. Good kill from Sator there. Looks like Sandalman is now going to push for the command unit into Foxtrot. It's taken him such a long time to do that. And he's now calling them in when he really doesn't have the kind of control that he had earlier on. Here come the supporting infantry, though, that I think are going to try and protect that command unit. Sator really trying to exploit the south here now, though. I think he's completely given up on golf. He has a small unit in there that is about to get rocket artillery. Nothing too heavy, though. And, yeah, I think he's just going to hold that position as, as best he can not reinforce and try and push through this kind of center south position here he's opening up the avenue down south with the control of the riflemen and the riflemen in the center do take down the live garden that were there Commandos do engage the M41A1 and take both of those out. So that was quite nice work from those commandos. I think, uh, ooh, the Burning Skrupa opened fire there. Sandalman spotted it, but did Satyr? That is the question. Did Satyr spot that? He's moving units in there as the uh was that milan that went down there the 20 mil might be able to finish off these commandos though because they are going to be a lot weaker against the aircraft with just the mini me and the ouster but yeah i don't think sata spotted the furnings group because i imagine he would have moved the commandos to try and attack those fittings, Gabu. So the Fuchs Milan has come in. We've got a four stack of K1s with some riflemen behind, although heavily damaged. We've got another four squads of, I imagine, the riflemen coming in here. And for the first time, I feel like Sator's got a real dominating presence in Foxtrot. I think taking this little forest on the southern side of Foxtrot has really helped him out here. And Sandalman appears to be in full retreat right now. If he can take care of these commandos up here in the north, he could open up kind of the northern route into Foxtrot. It gives him another avenue to get in there. But he is going to need to take care of them. The Live Garden do unload early this time. And here comes the, the Lars attack. I think Sandalman's uh, starting to get worried by Satyr's push forwards. And the riflemen are going to start engaging and trying to push through this northeastern forest on the corner of Foxtrot that the m113gs will go down and the dragon air trying to retreat but now under heavy fire all those m113as yeah sandalman is worried and that also might alert satyr to what is in this compound i think they're live garden no dragon ears trying to take care of these units the burning group i think are going to be spotted here though Yep. Will Sandalman be able to survive? I th think he's just, yeah, he's just been able to survive. But Satyr 100% should know that Furnings group is there now, though. We got some M1 Abrams pushing up north. 
The riflemen have all split up and they're pushing out from Foxtrot in the center. The K1's also split out. Looks like they're going to support that push. Here comes a rocket attack to try and hit those Funnings group. Don't think he's going to get this. We've still got some more. That was close. No. Biscuit. Oh, it's so close. <laughs> One of them goes down. He needs another strike. I'm kind of surprised only one died in that direct strike there. So, Sandalman gets away with it. Just losing one mana out of that Furnings group. And I'm kind of surprised he hasn't moved it from that compound. But Sater concentrating on pushing out of Foxtrot into Charlie now. Is there any command units on the way? Yes, we have a P4 PC. Driving into Foxtrot, and that is going to give Satyr the plus one lead. We got a Thunderbolt overhead with a block 15 on uh, a superiority duty. Thunderbolt's coming in to hit those Leopard 2A1s. We had at least one hit there. Down goes one of them. Thunderbolt's continuing to push forwards, but there is an automatic right here. Some heavy hits on that Thunderbolt. He needs to get itself out of there. But no, it does go down. Has Satyr done enough with that Thunderbolt? I think he has just about. He took out some Leopard 2s earlier and he took out a Leopard 2A1. Oh, big snipe from the K1s. Big snipe from the K1s as the F4F comes in to fight off the F16. Both of them take each other down. And the F-16A should just make its way out. The uh, Rock Eye with the Napalm coming in to hit the edge of that forest. But massive strike from those K-1s onto the command unit. And that gives Sato a plus three. The combination of taking down the Charlie command unit and bringing in the P-4PC into Foxtrot. Giving him the plus three. There's just 12 minutes left on the clock. And Sandalman needs to do something sharpish if he's gonna if he's gonna win this game luckily he had them the uh fuchs milan that was preparing to come into foxtrot so he can come in and pick up the plus two again in charlie puff coming in there trying to face off against the automatic well that puff goes down no it did manage to get out nice work from sandalman on the um the seed micro there and the Funnings group do come in to hold Charlie once again Satyr restricted to a plus one gets himself around about a 40 point lead he has the plus one Sandalman is not out of it yet he still has the opportunity but he does need to work fast he's only got 10 minutes left on the clock now we got some M1 Abrams starting to push through the northern part of Foxtrot I think Satyr's trying to concentrate on clearing out this forest area. And actually, that might allow him as well to push through onto the Furnings group with those M1 Abrams. K1s are going to need to be refueled. They're all lacking on fuel. Some of them need to be fixed up as well. There's a nice recons unit here from the uh, the uh, Falls Calm Jaeger. And the Tumat as well, firing off those Tumat missiles. We've got quite a few Leopard 2A1s in here now, though. Ooh, but one of them sniped by that Tumat. Up here in the north, the Dragonair are taken down. There is a Fennec 20 mil in the area as well, though. It's looking difficult for Sandalman. If this push results in the Furnings group going down, I think that's game over. Commandos are still alive. I don't know what... I think it's the same commandos from before that are still alive in that northern position. Sandalman's trying to get infantry forward, though, but his flanks are completely compromised. F-16 block 5 coming in with the clusters. I'm pretty sure they're clusters. Yeah, they are. And that M1 Abrams should go down here. 
Ooh, it does manage to survive on one health. The live garden take it out with the Carl Gustav. So, Sandelman holds off the push. He's got nine minutes left. There's a plus one. But he is now 80 points down. He does need to start acting. Well, he is acting, clearly. He's not he's not resting on his laurels. He is making pushes as the automatic almost taken out by the riflemen. But he does need to uh, make some kind of play to counter Foxtrot. More Leopard 2A1s on the way. I'm not sure whether it's just just me perhaps not being as skilled a war game caster. But like I say, I'm really surprised that Sandalman hasn't used more of his heavier tanks. He has Leopard 2A4s and 2A5s, I believe, available to him. Let's have a look. Yeah, Leopard 2A4s and Leopard 2A5s. I'm just really surprised that I, we haven't seen at least one of those heavier tanks out on the ground. Because the K1s just cannot stand up to those heavier tanks. And the Leopard 2s and the 2A1s really, ha really haven't done it for Sandalmen. Perhaps that's a slight mistake not to have one of, at least one of those heavier tanks out. But that's just my observation. I'm not going to say I'm 100% correct on that. It does seem at least odd to have those in the deck if you're not going to use them because they are activation points that are completely underutilized right now. So they could have been spent on something else. Live Garden are on the way forward. All of the supporting vehicles have gone down. There are there are a couple of K1s supporting Foxtrot. But the Live Garden are starting to move in and Sandalman might be able to get a command unit into the north of Foxtrot. At least stop the ticket bleed and perhaps if he can destroy the P4, he can push on. But I'm not 100% sure whether he's going to be able to get back the tickets with just a single plus one. Ooh. The Roland, double Roland does take down that F-16. So once too many times for that F-16. And the artillery fire now going to come in and start hitting those live guard and will they be able to clear up the riflemen in time and then move out of the position? It doesn't look like it at this point. There is a Lynx on the south, but none has not been touched so far. I'm not actually sure how long that's been there for. Okay, so the Live God and are going to destroy the Riflemen. There is some M1 Abrams coming up, though, to provide Overwatch from the hilltop. And a Thunderbolt comes down south. The Automatic does start firing off. F-16 way in enemy territory now. We'll fly over the automatic. <laughs> Actually, evacs in time. So the P-4 moved there. And I'm not really sure why. I think Satan made a mistake and selected that unit when he was trying to select other units. And moved that P-4. Because I can't see any other reason that he would have moved that P4. Puff coming in here to try and counteract the automatic. Again, good micro from Sandalman. Definitely has his uh, seed work down. Uh, the... the uh... Ooh! The Fliegerfaust! Just so I was about to zoom in. On the helo there, the Fliegerfaust sniped that one out of the air. Still a plus one for Sater, block 15 down south. 
fighting against the F-16s take each other out again. Jaeger have started to push through here. I'm not sure actually who's going to win this out, Jaeger or Rifleman. It looks like Sandelman's backed off. He doesn't want the engagement. I think he could win the engagement if he brings the links over, but I'm guessing he doesn't really want he doesn't want those Jaegers in a long drawn out fight. Doesn't really see the advantage of fighting that particular battle and just wants them for the optics onto Bravo. But there's only four minutes left now. Sato has a pretty big lead. Close to 200 points. I'm, I don't think Sandelman's going to be able to get it back. But what a fight he has put out. He's still fighting now. You never know. But I think he needs. He definitely needs more than a plus one now. So I don't think he's going to get it. Let's ride on board the Thunderbolt. Smoke coming in below. the bolt not quite staying over target doesn't want to stray over that automatic i think that's the only the second thunderbolt that sato has access to does take out the links not quite but should do on the next burst or well, the puff will take care of it anyway we do have an f16a coming in here with those cluster munitions. Pretty sure they're clusters. Yeah, I say that every time. Oh, taken down by the Rolands again. Here comes the push from Sandelman. So, Sita's backed off. I think he's happy with the lead he's got. There's two minutes left. Or was it just a mistake? I think it was a mistake again that he bat that P4 off. Because he's just pushed it back into the exact same position. Unless he's trying to fake Sandelman out and somehow make him think that the command unit's in here. I don't know. I think he just selected it by accident. Okay, M1s engaging against the Leopard 2A1s. Ooh, Sandelman does take out an M1 Abrams there. But he is half damaged on the Leopard, so I think he's right to back that off. And Sata has four of them up north but we have a couple of peace rhines kind of surprised they didn't fire against those abrams coming around for another try i think sata desperately trying to get them out of there no the peace rhines firing off against the puff really surprised those peace rhines didn't engage the abrams Plus one to Satyr. One minute left on the clock. Around about 200 point lead. I think it'd be a miracle for Sandelman to win it. But what a fight he's put up until the bitter end. Here come the Peace Rides in now. Does take out one of the K1s. But those Rolands have done a hell of a lot of work for Satyr. They have killed a lot of stuff. Uh, congratulations to Sata. Uh, what a fantastic game this was. Probably, I think, the best game that I've cast so far in terms of the abilities of both players, the kind of the fight between both players, and the fact that this could have gone either way for a huge proportion of this game. I've got to hand it to both players. Congratulations to them. Sata will pick up the victory in 20 seconds. Enter Sandelman. <laughs> enter sandelman put up such a great fight and i think certainly he could have won this game he wasn't far from dominating the hill on foxtrot and he could have gone either way at any point m1s control the hill but there we have it Sata is the victor 3,765 kills to 3,045 losses. Well done. Uh, congratulations to Sato. Commiserations to Sanderman. Like I was saying, a very tight game between these two players.
Hopefully you enjoyed that cast as much as I did. I definitely enjoyed it. And yeah. Hopefully we get many more casts like it. If you've enjoyed it, remember to hit subscribe so you don't miss any future action. Also, leave your comments down below. Let me know what you thought about the game. And if you've got any recommendations for games, I'd like to stick to tournament games where possible. Um, but if you do have any recommendations, then you can catch me in Discord. I am in the Bootcamp Discord. Um, so you can catch me in there. Or you can jump into the description and jump into my own dis Discord and chat to me in there. Thanks very much for watching. I am Alphabird. I will see you next time.